What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. If you watch my channel, you know I love these super small form factor PC builds and today that's exactly what we're gonna be putting together. The case that I'm using here goes by the name Goodsorry AO2, but I'm sure it's known by other names and it's available on Amazon for 68 bucks. I had a couple viewers mention this case to me and they do go by a few different names. So if you know the original name of this case, let me know in the comments below. But the main reason I wanted to use this case is because it supports a low profile GPU. And the GPU I'm gonna be using in this build is the MSI GeForce GTX 1650. It's not the most powerful card in the world, but I've personally been wanting to get my hands on a low profile version to see how it performs. So when I was originally planning this build, I really did want to go with an Intel CPU because everybody's using Ryzen nowadays and it's really hard to deny why. Performance and price are spot on with these third gen Ryzen CPUs. And if you want to go back a little further, you can pick up a first gen or a second gen Ryzen CPU for really cheap and still get some great performance out of it. But for this build here, I did go a little overboard on the CPU given that I'm only using a 1650 and I chose the Ryzen 5 3600. This is the non-X variant, and I couldn't pass it up with a price tag of $180. Now, if you want to go with the second gen 2600, you can pick them up for about $110, and it's still going to perform really great. But again, this is something I've personally been wanting to test out in the channel, and this is really going to help with emulation in this little tiny system. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick build, and then we'll get right into some PC gaming performance, and I'll give you a little sneak peek at emulation. But I do have part two coming up on this build here, strictly dedicated to emulation. So here's a rundown on the parts used in this build. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 5 3600. This is a 6-core CPU, 12 threads, base clock of 3.6, boost of 4.2. The motherboard I'm using is the ASRock Fatality B450 Mini ITX. 16 gigabytes of Team Force Vulcan Z RAM at 3200 megahertz. The GPU is the MSI GTX 1650 4GB low-profile version. A 1TB Team Force Vulcan 2.5-inch SSD a goodie sorry AO2 mini ITX case. And for the power supply, this is kind of a placeholder until I find something better, but I chose a replace power 350 watt flex ATX. That's what goes inside of this case. I personally recommend not using this power supply, get something a little higher end, but it was readily available and it cost $30. So I'm gonna see how it performs here, but I will be changing this out in the future. And I also added two 80 millimeter case fans. And the total cost on this came out to $772. Now you could bring this cost down by choosing the older second gen Ryzen 5 2600, a cheaper SSD and less RAM. But this is what I'm using for this build and the total cost was $772 USD. So right off the bat, I'm loving this case. It's all aluminum. They do offer two different colors, black and silver. It has two USB 3.0 ports on the front and your audio jacks. Now this is meant to sit sideways, but I'm gonna see if I can set it vertically. I think it would look really good as just a small desktop tower. And to tell you the truth, there's actually plenty of room inside of here. I'm gonna be using the stock stealth cooler that came with the Ryzen 5 3600, but you could use something a little taller given the space we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything thrown together here. First up, I need to place my CPU in the motherboard. We're using that 3600. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using the stock stealth cooler that came with this CPU. But given the space we have in the case, if it comes down to it, I can add something a bit taller. So here we are, I have the motherboard put together, have the cooler mounted and the RAM installed. It's time to put this inside of the case. I just went ahead and mounted that power supply to see how much space I have in here. And it looks like this thing's gonna fit perfectly. This case does support two 80 millimeter fans, so I wanna be adding two Cooler Master fans in here, hopefully to keep everything nice and chilly. This case does come with a hard drive bracket so you can mount several SSDs on top, but I don't wanna block any of the airflow to the cooler, so I'm gonna be using the single SSD slot in the back of the case. Really nice little design here. I definitely need to do some cable management in here. Hopefully it turns out okay, but now it's time to add that low profile 1650 GPU. The way they have this case set up, it looks like this GPU is going to block a lot of the airflow from the 80 millimeter fans that I want to install here. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on the temperatures. I gotta say, even though this case is really small, it's pretty easy to build inside of. I've definitely dealt with some smaller cases that were just horrible to build with. So now that I have everything together, I'm going to do a little cable management. We'll take a look at the final product. So after everything was installed properly and I cleaned up the wires, I think it turned out pretty decent. I love the way it looks, and like I mentioned, there's actually a lot of room in this tiny case. 
It is possible to set this case vertically, and that's exactly how I want to do it. But unfortunately, at the time of making this video, I don't have long enough screws to work with the feet that are pre-installed on the bottom. You could move them to the side if you had longer screws. And a quick comparison between a mini tower case and the PC we just built. As you can see, this thing is tiny. So now it's time to see how this little thing performs. All right, so here we are. I have Windows 10 Pro installed. As you can see, we have that Ryzen 5 3600, six cores, 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, and that low profile MSI NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650. So the first thing I wanted to do was get a couple CPU benchmarks out of the way. First up, we have Geekbench 5 on single core, 1173, Multi-core, 6162. I still need to go back and do this with the 2600, the 3400, the 32, the 22, and the 2400G. The next test I wanted to run was Cinebench R20. My highest score here was 3258. It's not looking that bad here, given that the Ryzen 7 1700X with two more cores and four more threads scored a 3455. So we're really coming up with these third gen Ryzen's. And keep in mind, this is all at the stock clocks. If you had sufficient cooling, you could overclock the CPU and beat out that 1700X. One thing I was worried about with this build was power consumption, given that I only chose a 350 watt power supply, but it looks pretty decent. Idle from the wall, 68 watts, 1080p gaming, 157 watts max, and my extreme test, which consists of running Cinebench, R15, and 3D Mark Time Spy at the same exact time, 227 watts. So this 350 watt power supply is plenty for this build. Now everything seems to be working fine with this power supply, but I do not recommend it, mainly because of the noise. Unfortunately, the fan in this power supply is pretty loud, and I'm looking for a replacement right now. I will leave a link in the description once I find one, but if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Another thing I keep an eye on, especially with these small form factor builds, is CPU temperature. This is average across the board, idle around 56 degrees Celsius, 1080p gaming actually surprised me. I thought we'd see higher temps than this, but it's around 67 degrees Celsius. And in my extreme test, I hit 85 degrees Celsius, and this probably would have climbed up to 90 degrees if I left it for another five minutes. But keep in mind, this is worst case scenario. Everyday use, gaming, and emulation, you'll never see this super high temp here. So now it's time to get into some gaming. First up, we have Dauntless. High settings, I do have the resolution scale set to 100%. We're at 1080p getting an average of 97 FPS. Performance here is outstanding, and with any of these games, personally, I'm gonna be setting V-Sync on, but for this video, I'm not gonna have it on. Keep in mind, when turning V-Sync on, you're gonna be locked at 60 FPS, but it's also gonna take a strain off of the GPU and the CPU to keep those temps down. Next up, Project Cars 2, high settings, 1080p, Getting an average of 105 FPS, I really can't ask for more than this. I personally still play this game, love the rally sections in it, and it's working great on this machine. Rocket Lee, high settings, 1080p, 250 FPS. CSGO 1080p, high settings, getting an average of 263 FPS. GTA 5 1080p, high settings, DirectX 11, 136 FPS. And finally, for the gameplay section in this video, here's Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p, medium settings, getting an average of around 54 FPS. It's just not going to cut it at medium. Anyhow. 
Now the 1650 is definitely a 1080p card, but I did test some games at 1440. These are all high settings, and overall I think this little machine did a great job. I did mention I'll have a full emulation video coming up on this build very soon, so stay tuned to the channel, but I wanted to give you a quick look. Here's the Simu emulator running Breath of the Wild, and I'm averaging around 93 FPS. And finally, we have RPCS3, the PS3 emulator. This is Skate 3, this has been one of the harder ones to emulate, but it looks like this system and the latest update for RPCS3 will do 60 FPS in Skate 3. I'll have a lot more coming up in the dedicated emulation video, so if you're really interested in that, make sure you keep an eye on the channel. Well, I'm pretty impressed with the performance here and the form factor. Yes, it is a bit expensive for what you're getting, but building small does cost a little more than using, let's say, a mid-tower case. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave links in the description to everything I used in this build. And if you want to keep the price down, you could always go with the 2600 or even the 2400G or 3400G. That paired with this 1650 would be perfect. But in the end, I wanted as much CPU performance as I could get out of this small case without going super overboard. And I think I accomplished it. Keep an eye on the channel because I do have another video coming up strictly dedicated to emulation. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.